Hi, I'm Dr. Zandra Palma. I'm a physician here at Parsley Health in New York City. And today I'm gonna to explain to you a little bit about what cortisol is. Cortisol is something I measure a lot in my patients, especially anybody with chronic fatigue, depression, anxiety, and inflammation, obesity. Um, and the reason I do that is because it can, can contribute to a lot of those pathologies. So cortisol is a stress hormone. It's excreted by our adrenal glands, these two little glands that sit on the top of the kidneys in response to stress. In our normal adaptive environment, we evolved to secrete cortisol when an acute stressor happens. So let's say a Paleolithic man's being chased by a lion, he's supposed to secrete cortisol and this set of metabolic and uh, sympathetic responses is supposed to start. What's not supposed to happen is we're not supposed to have many little stressors throughout the day and keep excreting cortisol and keep excreting cortisol. Let's say non-paleolithic man, but man that's riding the subway, spills coffee on a shirt, then is late to work, then his boss is upset, then he has to do a meeting. That's many episodes where he's excreting cortisol. Sometimes people's cortisol, because of our modern stressors and our modern lifestyle, can be either too high or too low. You can excrete so much over the long term that your body just says, I don't need to do this anymore, or it can be chronically elevated from inflammation or other states. So let's talk about what cortisol, uh, when it's out of sync, does to your body. I'm gonna say the first thing that you'll pay attention to, cortisol makes you fat. Um, cortisol specifically deposits fat in the abdomen, so belly fat. If you've got a lot of belly, stubborn belly fat, you might wanna be tested for cortisol just for that. Cortisol is a class of hormones called glucocorticoids. So it's right in the name, gluco. It interacts with glucose and the glucose system. So it can derail how your body deals with storing sugar, letting sugar free, uh, and the insulin and glucagon system in the pancreas. Cortisol is also a great anti-inflammatory, so we need a certain amount of cortisol. So if your cortisol is too low, you could have chronic inflammation. You could have depression or anxiety. You could also get that from high cortisol states. Cortisol also interacts with other hormones. So cortisol can attack the sex hormones. It can, if it's too high, make your testosterone too low or your estrogen and progesterone, causing dysregulation in male and female health. Cortisol can also dysregulate the thyroid. The thyroid is the metabolic master of the body. So when cortisol dysregulates the thyroid, all parts of cellular metabolism can get out of whack. If you wanna read more about this, there's a great book that's full of primary literature resources and references. It's called Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers by Robert Sapolsky. And it's talking exactly about that evolutionary difference between how we evolved and how our cortisol system evolved and how we live now and how the cortisol system can get dysregulated. Um, I read this book in college in my endocrinology class and it's still relevant today. We'd love to have you here as a member at Parsley where we can do that kind of testing and address the underlying root cause of some of these issues that I mentioned because this is not done in conventional medicine and we think it's really important to explore this system, how it interacts with other endocrine systems, and how it interacts with other body organs and body systems.